out on uh, one of my wee donders. Uh, I've decided uh, rather than going up my normal wee haunt of Meekle Bin up the Kempsies, I'll go up a place in Dungoyle. Uh, look, it's, a, it's a nice wee area uh, in the uh, Kempsies. Uh, not very many people go there at all, but uh, as you can see, this is just a uh, Valley, you can just see it all breaking up there. I can't zoom in on this bit here, but you can start seeing all the mountains. There's Dark Coil. This uh, lot of weather, as you, as you can see, there is blue skies about. But there's blue sky there. Welcome to Scotland. Fantastic weather. We've had hail, we've had snow. We're just on the wee path up here, up to Dungoyle. What we're going to do is just pop this heat out the air of the clouds, as you can see. Nice blue sky, Lomond Valley, Ben Lomond, Ben Lady, all that, all over there. Fantastic views. Uh, it is absolutely Baltic here though. Uh, we are going through a field with uh, plenty of sheep around. Uh, we are going to be following the path. And as always, country code, keep dogs on a lead. Uh, this is uh, Till Tilly likes the chase. She, she, she doesn't like the chase as in nasty. She likes the chase as in, oh look, there's a fluffy thing, let's, get, let's go play with it. Uh, so she will run, scare the sheep, end up getting shot by a farmer because I'm pretty sure they're legally obliged to do so. So as we are just coming round this wee bit here, you can see plenty and plenty of sheep there on the path. So take it slowly, make sure the sheep know you're there, make sure they get out of the way before you get there, and uh, all that jazz, and uh, be a responsible dog walker. Uh, and uh, even more so bushcrafter. Makes sense. There the sheep have seen us and there they've started to walk away from us. So I'll stop, let them get out of the way and then continue on. Uh, now let's see what we can see. Try and put it up. Lowen Valley. Look at that. Views all around. You can see over there the mountains, the, the bends, the ends of uh, the valley there's up there. Lowen Valley. We're starting to get shrouded. And all the the rain and mist. Starting to not see it, that means that, that wall is coming this way. Blue skies just now, that's what we're getting soon. Might not last for long, clear up again, but uh, great views. So, we've reached the woods, passed through the field to the sheep, uh, down the bottom end. Tilly on the lead, she can now come off the lead uh, as this is all a fenced off area so the sheep don't get lost in the woods. Therefore, there should be any sheep to worry about in here. Another wee tip gates. It's just your green cross code, well, your country code, green cross code, your country code again. Leave gates how you find them. If the gate's shut, shut it after you. If the gate is open, leave it open. Uh, this is for farmers, they might be coming in their wee tractor uh, and leaving the gate open for a reason. Uh, they might be steering cattle and all that stuff in there. So if you leave, if you shut the gate after it's been left open, 
uh, they're going to cause mayhem if they bring a full herd of sheep, cattle, anything like that up uh, and can't get in uh, and they'll be calling you for another under the sun. Now, Tilly is quite obviously wanting to get out in the woods, so uh, we'll get off the lead. Yes, come here. Come here, Tilly. There you go. There you go. And uh, she's quite happy running about and following us up the path. So we're now facing Dungoyle. Can I see it now? Uh, and as I say earlier on with the weather, that's it. Uh, starting to filter into the edge there of the valley. You can start to see it misting over. The camera's not very good on the iPhone, but uh, it's all good. Uh, obviously, as well, if you see these signs, just have a read of them. Think of that. Take care, don't start fires. Uh, obviously, if you see signs, go and heed, heed them. Uh, I know we're all a wee bit sensible and uh, know how to handle the fires and stuff like that. Just make sure it's all set up properly and things like that. Uh, so, let's go and see where, uh, what we get. Uh, coming up here is the uh, trees that are damaged. I've passed that tree already. However, the break in it is old, it's been weathered, it's, it's damp, things like that. However, this one is new, this is fresh. That's a fresh break through the winds. There's the back end of it, the top end of it there. Obviously, when you're out and about, be mindful uh, of the creaking and groaning. Just be wary of what's about you. Because that's the last thing you want is a bit of a couple of ton of tree coming down on you. Because then it's, uh, don't call it widow makers for nothing. So, uh, certainly, we shall be out for them. There we go, there's the nice blue skies. And there's the cold that's coming in, the front. What way is it going? It's going in an easterly direction. If we look that way, that's west. Look at that, it's west. North, roughly about there. So, eventually, yep, we will get, maybe get a little bit wet. Yeah, a bit damp, but we've got all the stuff that we need for it to battle through. Now we tip I found and how to tell if it's going to rain in the next wee while, 20 minutes, half an hour ish. If you hear the trees, they're a wee bit still. But when the wind picks up, they start blowing a hooli. Now it's a bit hard to hear in this uh, the gales, winds, or whatever we're having now. Uh, it means it's going to rain. There we go, there's the gust of wind now. Can you feel it? Or if you can hear it in the microphone. As it's starting. And as you can see, blue sky's starting to go. Starting to get a wee bit more just white in the sky. It's going to be rain. That's the cold front pushing in. Just before the rain. The rain's pushing it and uh, going a wee bit of wind. So that's a wee, a wee tip for out about. And after that, within a couple of seconds, there's the snow coming down. You can actually see it getting closer to you, coming down here. I've had that with rain before, with a big uh, gush, uh, downpour of rain. Bloody hell, that was uh, exhilarating. I was heading for it anyway, so I was like, ah, fuck it, why not? Just, just go for it anyway. That's the snow on. As you can hear, the, the trees, right there. There we go, it's coming now. There we go, there's the front hit. There we go.
one thing I've found as well if you're trying to get a picture of your dog same with children if you're trying to get a picture of your children doing something or anything like that don't bother taking a still photo get a video video what they're doing and then afterwards you can pause the video and take a screenshot it's a lot bloody easier than anything so here we go apparently this is Scotland getting his winter 8 inches of snow aye, maybe in the hills but we'll see 8 inches isn't too bad not much either but there you go this is snow turning slightly icy now I don't know if you can see in the background there Been Driving, driving Just with the wind When you're out and about Doesn't matter if it's a sunny day down below Get out in the hills Always take warm kit Waterproofs I've got a bit of uh, power bank as well for my phone In case it runs out of battery Especially taking all these videos Down about 30% now I've got a power bank that's got about six charge, full charges for the iPhone in it. So if you're out and about, don't be stupid. What's the phrase? If you fail to prepare, you prepare to fail. That's one that's better known. So yeah, see the blue skies coming out again. Looks like we're going to get a bit of rest. That's all coming this way. However, snow will be back. The wind will be there. All that stuff. Philly's loving it. I'm loving it as well. I'm pretty sure everybody else out there loves it as well. One thing I always look out for, um, especially the paths, just to see how much they're used. His footprints. That one's no mine. Looks recent enough-ish, i.e. today. Because if you look at the, the other footprints, that one there, the one that's over, covering over, they're not as deep, been uh, kind of trodden in a wee bit, so it uh, gives a good idea of if there's dog walkers about. However, that foot looks like that foot, so whoever's went up has gone down. Uh, so, not really expecting to see anybody up here, but there's always a chance because, uh, as you like to know, uh, I stick to the paths as much as I, I, I need to, but I like going in and out of the trees and all that stuff and keeping out people's ways just so they don't know I'm kind of there and knocking about. And if I find a good camping spot, you know, I don't want people to be able to see it and things like that. So, uh, uh, it's just one to look out for. Um, also, as well as human tracks, there's all the other tracks as well deer tracks, fox, anything like that. Uh, apparently, there's an old myth, uh, especially up uh, in Mickle Bin, there's a black, black panther kind of cat like creature that looks about these woods. So, uh, it's only been spotted once, apparently, uh, a good few years ago. But uh, like it says, it was a, a myth so far, no corroborative evidence, all that nonsense. But then again, uh, there are apparently a big few, a few big cats lurking about uh, the whole of Britain, uh, by what people are saying. So, uh, see what tracks you can find, and that'll get a good indication of what the wildlife are like, uh, and what's out and about in, in your area, things like that. Um, obviously, look for your tracks, you know, through the through the uh, forests, through the branches, through the grass. Uh, what you call it, desire lines, uh, the desirable path taken by animals. Um, <clears throat> so, so we're just following this round here. The aim objective today is to get to a wee bit just. A wee bit further around this bend, uh, just to see what it's like it is for um, camping near, because it's like a 
kind of a, a mini, mini, mini loch. Uh, good water source. Good wee bit as well. Plenty of footprints about. But there we go, there's the, the snow earlier in the day. Just gives you an idea of what's about. Uh, and if you've no guessed already, I like to babble. Just say whatever. Uh, no one really came across any fungus up here just now. It is mild, there is some fungus growing here and there, but not much here. A couple of birds have came out. The blue tits, the great tits, they, they like these woods. Uh, so they, they chirp about all over the place. Uh, it's nice to see some regeneration. You've got your big daddy trees, mommy trees. And then you've got your babies just growing up. Uh, do not use these as firewood. These trees will need to grow for, I don't know what, now 20 years or something like that, I think. 25 years, 30 years in total. To get maybe as big as that. Uh, so, only use really fallen trees. Pine trees, like pine, pine forests like this, fantastic. Because uh, there's always fallen trees about you can saw up. Uh, no had to do it yet. It's not been out enough. Uh, hopefully this summer I will uh, start getting my fire lighting going. Try and find the <coughs> fat wood. Just make some fat sticks, all that sort of stuff, and get into the, the bushcraft stuff. Uh, as you can see, the, there is there is light, there is sun. That's kind of to the easterly direction. East I would guess is about there. That's where the wind's coming from. But all oh, nice blue skies now. Look at that, fair cry. So, uh, hopefully when we're a bit further in this corner we'll get to see Dungoyle. So, I've just walked up this wee path here. And it continues up this way here. That's the, obviously, the track everybody wants to go on. As you can see how it's maintained. However, I noticed this wee track doing this way and uh, obviously me knowing my route I was like, I think that's the track I need to be on So, handy as always, I do have the OS downloaded app on my phone uh, If you do get OS maps, uh, they do have a downloadable part where uh, you can add that um, map that you've got onto your OS on your phone um, I like using it just for wee donders like this because it's just paths and things like that I'm not, I'm not getting lost or anything like that If I was going cross country I would use the use the, the hard copy uh, I would take that with me um, So Looks like we're going down this path I'm liking this because It's not well worn at all It doesn't look like there's been many people down here uh, It looks as though it's overgrowing things like that And that's what I like to hear Especially when you're trying to find a wee place to camp uh, Especially just for the now, somewhere to sit down and eat your dinner um, We pack lunch you got So having a look about, it doesn't look too as though there's been much traffic down this way Which is fantastic So uh, when you're out and about, always be mindful of where you are going uh, Always keep suitable uh, items on you where you can find your way, uh, map compass. If you, if I've got one of those Etrex 10 things as well. That's me just to plot where I've been and what route I've taken, so I can put it on the computer. Then I know that's a, a what's known as a proven route. It's a route that I've been before. I know what way it's going uh, and things like that. I can do that same route again because it's proven to be a good route. So uh, just heading down this way, hopefully there's a wee loch, kind of mini pond thing, whatever you want to call it, so a wee mini loch, um, and we'll find out uh, if there's any good camping pits. It's a lot more sheltered here anyway. Um, as you can see, it's not starting to come back over again, uh, but it's nearly lunchtime, so let's find somewhere. Basically found a, a wee route up the tree line here. Yeah. This whole bit here 
is that old marshy, obviously the runoff or something like that, all the way down to the water source. We'll just head along the trees and get to the, the stump here. Uh, see how that is. Um, In one of my previous videos, I mentioned about animal tracks. Probably mentioned that a wee bit in here as well. Um, I'm following this down here. However, you can see the line. I'll use my other end. You can see the line coming down here below my feet. And then you can see it continue further up around this way. Uh, that's a large mammal. I would, in here, guess. It's deer. There is deer out and about. Uh, never seen a deer in these forests. They're obviously all the all the forest is that dense. They, they're very well camouflaged. Uh, seen droppings, things like that. However, never actually come across one. Up the campsies. So we'll see. Let's see what's happening. There we go. Campsies is the flight path to landing in Glasgow airport so there's a, a lot of airplanes that fly about here uh, sometimes a lot lower than that as well there we go we can see the, the deer truck pass through there kind of follow it and then cut across to there if you can looks so there's a wee ditch there so maybe a wee river runoff river stream burn to get set in fact here it is here see it's all mushy here there we go nice clean water so we do the good thing is it's full of these wee bits we just step over full of these wee streams about there we go there's a a, a watchers Post by the looks of it. Must be. Or just post. Yeah, I don't suspect that. I could, could use that in the future. Have a, try and have a gander at the, the wildlife. Goes by. It's always handy to note these things for the future and try and use them for your benefit. Obviously, it's up there for a reason. Maybe the Wildlife Trust is a. Uh, you know, conducting surveys or whatever. Um, but it's good to hand it and use it for your own benefit if you can. Right, as you're coming across here, as you can see, there's a uh, puddles. This is all marshy marsh. However, because this is all laying down and flat by thanks of the deer, maybe you can stand on that, and it's quite a good wee. I'm going to go across here and take here. One thing to do, what I've uh, noticed, instead of standing on this bit here and getting your foot wet, see if you're going to cross the uh, wet parts, find the stalk, the stems, where it all starts, stand on that, that's a tough, it's a lot tougher, it'll hold your weight and uh, a lot better. There we go, there's the, there's the lock. Found it, water source. It's streaming. Looks like there's a lot of cattails maybe grow in it as well. There's not much else around here. Plenty of trees, you probably put, might actually do that. Hammock and tarp up there and camp away. You've got water source here or that stream there. Yeah, you're laughing. Put everything when you've got your camper up. You can go with Donders and see what's about. Yeah, we've actually just came to the, the stream here where we crossed over, but we came up a wee bit. Uh, I went to check out what this was. It's like great stuff in the debris and stuff getting uh, through the water. Very nice wee water source there. And then, uh, I'm going to this wee clearing. 
and by the looks of it, this is where we're going to have lunch. Up there. I think uh, I'll attach the poncho to this bit here. Uh, and we'll get a wee shelter going. Looks nice and shelter for the, for the wind anyway. And uh, nice wee view. So uh, let's get lunch. Well, I've had a wee scout uh, just in the woods, just where we were. Uh, that's the tree with the wee uh, watch, watch tower, watch perch. We've came in. So I think I'm just going to set a wee bash up here. Uh, there's a wee clearing there. I was thinking about putting the bash onto that post there, just so we've got a wee bit of view, all that sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah, that, but that's rotten through. Uh, it's no good. It's a good, good wee bit there for tents. So uh, there's a wee party of us going. There's a uh, tent space there and plenty of hammock space in here. What is it? So uh, we'll get a bash up. We'll get lunch. It's nice and sheltered in here. The rolling, uh, the rolling wind is uh, coming down that that wee clearing bit. Oh, I mean, quite fast, but it uh, still seems quite clear. Uh, and uh, we'll see you when we get dinner. So, here we have a very crude with Basha. It's tied at four points. And then one down there as well. It's basically, just to keep any snow or rain off of me, it's starting to cloud over again. Uh, lunch. Here's Tilly's wee dinner. Water bowl. Got my dinner as well. Just a wee packed lunchbox. Cup of tea, and here I have uh, water for Tilly uh, if I need it as well. Uh, and there's warm, warm kit, dry kit in there. Uh, a wee Nori shirt and a um, big quality jacket as well. Uh, it's not too bad. Got a roll in there as well, just in case I've cut short. I've got a Gore Tex jacket, although well, I've not really needed it today. It's the fan, um, axe, all that sort of thing as well. Just, just, just in case. Always come prepared. Um, so it's uh, not a bad wee spot for lunch. I think I'll be camping here again at some point. Looks good for the for the summer. Try and get this without the phone falling down. As you see. I like to use the poncho out when I'm out and about. It's quick, it's easy to put up, things like that. What I like to do is use the same knot all the time. Don't know what it's called. I'll find out, or I'm pretty sure you'll inform me of it. Um, I'm not too clued up on the knots. Uh, I like the Prisic knot, and I like this knot. Um, what you do, uh, make sure you get it in there. Just tie it like you would. Shoe. So that's it, you're securing it like that. Like this knot. Okay? And then what you're doing is bringing the insecure end round and looking it round your finger. Like this. And flipping it under to make a loop. Notice the other end is still free. It's not a full shoe, as if you're doing a shoe. It's not two knots, it's just the one knot you're doing. Now if you pull it tight, okay? You've still got your loose end, but if you pull that, it's not going anywhere. Perfect for temporary shelters like that, if you're out for lunch or anything like that. And then when you're finished, the loose end, you're just untying it. Like that. And it's all done. That's the one I do like. Like it says, I don't know what the bloody hell name is. I will find out, more than likely. Um, and hopefully I'll show you, uh, if I get the tarp up, use the, the Prisic knot. Um, I like the idea of it, I've never actually used it before. I like the idea of it. Uh, who is it? Um, perfect video on the Prisic knot is um, Bushcraft Boy. Look him up. He's uh, he's knows his stuff. He's good. Um, so hopefully, this looks a nice sweet area anyway, uh, I'll certainly remember it <coughs> for the summertime. Get out here a bit more, um, hopefully go up Dungoyle, um, which is just over there, you can't see it because of the, the glare. 
in the camera. Um, it is up there, however, I need to pack up, start wandering my way back uh, to pick the wings up. I'm just gonna I've got a wee bit of time heading back to the, the car uh, So that fork in the road What I've done uh, What I've done is managed uh, Just went further up the road To see how that is As you can see it Snow's on again uh, So aye, uh, it's uh, Quite enjoying the day Maybe a walk Feeling a bit sodging but Not too much Always bring a pair of dry socks, uh, and I've got trainers in the car as well. Uh, so that's all right. That's, that's that sorted. But at least I'm dry. So we'll see what's at the top of this path, uh, and see what's happening. And at the end of the path is a sheep fold. That's it. Uh, gonna go through it, round it, around like that. Looks like there's a wee valley just beyond it. Don't want to go in there. It's no point. I'm not going to go any further down anyway. I just want to see what's at the end of the path. So you sheep pen. That was it. Nothing else. Plenty of water and runoff coming in. Plenty of water about. All good. So, I don't know what's this. There we are, that gunky stuff. That was a tree that's been cut down and shoved over there. Do you not know where that stuff is? Nothing dripping off there, so it looks like that's dripped down there. Hmm. Things you see in nature. That's one to look into and find out what it is. See if you can use it. See if you need to stay away from it. All that sort of stuff. Uh, so, back to the motor. Right, there's Tilly, hearing all the creaking. Yeah, that's the widow makers in the making. Tilly's thinking it's something she can go and play with, however, doesn't realise it could be the top of one of these trees coming down, or the full thing coming down, or just a branch. Could be anything. That's not that creaking. That squeaking is not birds. That's the wood of the trees as they bend in the wind. As you can see, that's what happens to the trees. All down there as well. Widowmakers. One good gust. That's all it takes. Right, well, we're walking back to the car. Uh, a bit further distance till we get to the e sheep field that we first came through. Uh, I'll just go through what I take. Um, obviously, my rucksack. Um, I have the poncho and some ties with it. I uh, don't really use bungees a lot. I like the the guy ropes. Um, use them. A couple of pegs if need be. Uh, we normally bring lunch with us for myself and Tilly. Um, but as well in there is all your warm kit. I have a Norwegian shirt, a Norrie shirt. Uh, I think they're fantastic. Um, used and proved. And I also have um, uh, another um, warm fleecy thing. I can't remember the name of it. Uh, never used one before, but I bought it off of the um, Bushcraft Trade Post on Facebook. Um, so thank you very much, uh, whoever that was. I can't remember who it was. Um, Wearing, um, what I have is my uh, Gore-Tex DPM trousers. Uh, underneath, I have uh, a pair of 95 uh, military 95s DPM. 
uh, trousers as well. Uh, they're my preferred trousers, and I wear them day to day as well. Uh, they're comfy, they've got a lot of room uh, in the crotch area, and uh, they're just, just well wearing. Um, they're warm, they're cool, they dry quickly. I just like them, they're nice and comfortable, so I wear them quite a lot. Um, on my shoes, uh, try and bend this bit. Uh, I've got my cat boots, um, sprayed them a couple, a wee bit with um, waterproofing stuff, um, but inevitably you, you still get still get damp. It just wears a wee bit, uh, and then my gaiters as well. Um, generally, that's what I wear all the time. Um, underneath this jacket here, uh, which um, I've got out of uh, decathlon, I love this jacket. It's fantastic. Um, it's been good to me today. Uh, underneath that, I've got a Caramore um, uh, fleece uh, and then just a t-shirt. And uh, today, what, six degrees, wind chill factor, uh, three, maybe two, that's all you need. Uh, it's, it's fantastic. Uh, and then this uh, kind of balaclava, snood, hat kind of combo. Um, kind of first time I've used it, just it recently. And uh, it's, it's quite good. Uh, I do, do like that as well. So basically that's it, a pair of gloves. And that's it, out, out and a wee wander, a wee walking pole, um, just for getting up and about. Like it says, I says, I don't like tracks, I, I prefer going up like banks and into the woods and stuff like that, so a walking stick's good for shimmying up a wee bit more stability. Um, apart from that, uh, there's not much else I've got. I've got a Gore-Tex uh, jacket, uh, in case it gets uh, sodging, sodging wet, I can put that on. Uh, I have lure roll with hand sanitizer and a wee shovel, um, just a boot, um, and I also have, um, I also have a wee bag uh, for Tilly's poo bags. It's basically just a wee bag. Stick it in there, pull this shut, and pull the stopper over, and tuck it down the side. All Tilly's poo bags go in there. I'm not having to carry them in my pocket, and I take the crap home with me, uh, which is what all dog walkers should be doing. Uh, that's nice and easy. Uh, if not, uh, you know, get a carabiner, shove it in your belt loop, um, and hook hook the poo bags. Get poo bags that have got handles. Hook the poo bags on your side. Um, do it that way. You know, you can, it's, it's easy. People are, people are just lazy, um, and that's the way to do it. Um, but apart from that, on my donders, that's, that's about much much as what I take. Um, flask with tea in it and a cup. Like I say, it's just stuff to eat and drink. Uh, warm kit. I do have my fire kit with me as well. Uh, axe knife saw, just in case if I'm going to go out and about. I've, I've, I don't really set fires or anything like that. It's mere just in case, or, you know, um, I want to uh, see if I can get some fat wood or something like that, um, but we'll we'll uh, get videos on that hopefully uh, near this in the summertime. Uh, where we'll come back up here, visit another couple of places, see what we can find. Um, but Donders, that's all you need. Uh, Tilly, that's it. So we're just coming up for this fence here, so uh, I'll sign off just now. So here we are, back in the car. We break for the wetness. And as you can see, I always bring towels as well, so I'll get her a wee dry down as well. Get that wet dog smell about. Um, we are enjoying my daughters. Um, as you can see, Loman Valley, right across here. Can you see it? I will be back. I'll show you again when it's a clear day. Here, been up there a few times. Nice up there, Carn Valley Reservoir. Uh, nice wee walk up there. Uh, sweet standing stone as well in the middle of the forest. So I'll take you up there as well in the summer. I do intend.
wander up there as well. Um, I think there's a place at Earl Seat as well, I think it's the highest point in uh, the Gamsies. So I will take a wee trip until he's still, still, still doing what she's doing. Absolute pain in the backside. Um, so, Croonish food in, uh, the wandering picked signing off and I hope you have enjoyed uh, the video. There you go, that's the walk done. Just in time. That's the weather drawn in. There's no style or anything going that way. Here it comes. There ain't no blue skies after this. Just gonna get another nice few covering the snow.